Hello everybody from Plant Reviews UK, today is the 13th of April and I'm talking uh, in this video about uh, Tulbagia simleri, a uh, um, species of Tulbagia, uh, in particular this variety is called Cheryl uh, Rancho and I bought it from uh, Cotswold Garden Flowers, a nursery here in the United Kingdom. Um, the plant uh, is uh, uh, belong to the famous uh, to the genus, sorry, uh, to the genus Tulbagia in the family uh, Amarillidase and the subfamily Allioidae. So therefore, it is a quite a close relative of uh, onions and garlic. And uh, you can see the uh, umbel of flowers uh, kind of resemble a little bit the um, flower heads of many allium species. Um, Together with the allium, the um, uh, leaves of some species of Tubagia uh, are uh, uh, characterized by the fact that emit this uh, kind of uh, pretty uh, strong garlicky scent, uh, some species, however this one uh, in particular, Tulbagia simbleri, uh, doesn't. Uh, it is a bulbous plant uh, that uh, originates from the Drakensberg area in the Cape region of South Africa. I apologize uh, if I'm not able to have a good um, overview of the plant. I'm not too sure why the, uh, if I go further um, from the plant it doesn't actually focus but uh, however most important of course is that I can focus on the leaves and as well uh, on the uh, flowers that basically are the main attraction of the plant. Uh, the species uh, um, uh, um, um, sorry, the genus Tulbagia uh, is a genus that was dedicated to Rick uh, Tulbag, uh, that was the governor of, of the Cape province in South Africa and uh, submitted several Tulbagia species plants to Linnaeus uh, and, uh, well, to several plants that uh, to Linnaeus for classification, including some Tulbagia and Linnaeus obviously dedicated uh, one of them, uh, one group of plants to uh, Rick uh, Tulbag. And the species name Simleri uh, originates from uh, Mr. Uh, Paul Simler, who was the chief gardener at the Bossier Collection in Genève, where he cultivated indeed this, uh, the plant that would have been later classified as Tulbagia uh, Simleri. Uh, the plant itself is not particularly uh, big, it's about 30 centimeters tall with strap shade leaves. And and the uh, flower stem end up uh, with a number of uh, probably a dozen flowers in my case. Uh, the species uh, generally has uh, pink flowers, but this variety in particular, the uh, cherry Rancho, is white. I bought this uh, plant because the, um, it is characterized, uh, it is supposed to be characterized by a very strong scent, indeed, uh, it's sometimes commonly known as a fragrant Tulbagia or fragrant Agapanthus, uh, even if it's uh, just only distantly uh, related to the uh, Agapanthus, even if they belong still to the same family Amarillidase. Um, the flowers are pretty small, uh, about probably one centimeter across, one centimeter across, and the peculiarity of this flower is that uh, in the, at the center of the Tulbagia flower, you can actually uh, see a, a central structure, I'm trying to focus, that is called a crown, and uh, hopefully I would be able to focus. Okay, so the crown is this uh, central structure, as you can see. So you have outside the six tepals, while this inner part is called the crown or corona and is uh, kind of similar to the crown or corona that other species of Amarillidase have, uh, notably the Narcissi of Daffodils, where, upon, where indeed the corona, uh, the crown, is uh, one of the uh, most uh, distinctive uh, characteristics of Narcissi and Daffodil flowers. Uh, the scent of this plant, uh, um, unfortunately, I read that this plant is supposed with the single flower stem to perfume the whole room. Unfortunately, this is not the case. 
It's supposed to have a very strong uh, Gardenia scent, but uh, uh, to me it really uh, doesn't. Um, the fragrance, there is a fragrance, uh, it is, and also it is actually very pleasant, but I don't find, uh, even if it's just mild, you really have to be close to the flower to smell it. Um, at least in my uh, condition, probably in the wild in South Africa, in the hot sun, maybe the flower is a lot more scented. Uh, even if I have other South African plants and they are uh, perfectly scented and beautifully scented even in the United Kingdom conditions or even in indoor conditions. Uh, this one uh, doesn't really, to me, um, seem to have a, a gardenia scent, and not even a mild gardenia scent. Uh, to me gardenia is more like a citrusy and earthy as uh, a, a scent, it's very fresh. Instead this one is very uh, sweet and to me kind of resemble instead a lot the scent of uh, my uh, Viburnum cross Barkwoodie. So it's a mix of sweet and kind of almond scent. Again, it's very pleasant, but don't imagine uh, that this plant would perfume the whole room, in my opinion. Possibly the wild um, uh, flower, the pink variety is more fragrant, I do not know, but uh, I uh, read that even this white variety was very fragrant, unfortunately to me. This is not the case. Maybe this is the first flowering plant and usually first flowering plant are not as uh, uh, fragrant as uh, uh, the plant when it blooms um, the following years. However, of course, I will see how it goes in the next years. Uh, this uh, is a plant that is uh, not really big. It's about 30 centimeters tall. So uh, again, I'm sorry, I'm not too sure why I'm not able to focus on the plant um, at the moment. Uh, however, uh, it is, uh, uh, but I really wanted to do the, to make the video today because of course uh, the flowers might be gone in a few days. Um, and so therefore it is uh, quite easy to keep uh, indoors. Uh, the problem is if you want to keep it in the garden, this plant is uh, hardy only in USDA zone 9 and uh, therefore in the United Kingdom, most of which is zone 8, uh, is not really uh, hardy uh, uh, in outdoor conditions in the garden. Um, therefore should be kept only as a windowsill plant or uh, in a conservatory. Uh, or in a greenhouse in the United Kingdom, unless of course you live in a very very mild area of the United Kingdom, like for example in the Chile Islands or in Cornwall, and then you might have good chances that this plant actually can uh, overwinter outdoors. But in my conditions I live in Kent where uh, almost every year temperature drops below zero. I definitely wouldn't recommend uh, to have this plant outdoors in the garden all year round. Um, and my conditions in Kent, uh, in USDA zone 8 are pretty much the conditions where most of the United Kingdom is, as well as many parts of uh, Europe and temperate climate anyway. The uh, plant uh, needs to be cultivated in uh, a very well drained soil um, and um, keep it uh, moist from spring, um, sorry, from uh, uh, winter to spring when it is the active growth of the um, of, of the plant. It is a, a plant that is not particularly common, uh, I find, to uh, source. However, uh, the uh, quality of the plant that uh, Cotswold Gardens uh, gave me is really high. You can see how beautiful the flowers are. And if you like, of course, the uh, flowers, you want something a little bit unusual as houseplant, I can definitely recommend it. Uh, one thing is that, uh, like many bulbous plants, this plant needs very bright light, so I'm cultivating it on a south-facing uh, windowsill. Uh, I hope to uh, not to have forgotten anything, however, of course, uh, um, if you have any questions or like any further information, please let me know in the comments down below and I will be uh, more than uh, happy uh, to answer as soon as possible. As usual, I hope that you uh, enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, it would be great if you can please subscribe. Uh, and of course, if you like um, uh, this uh, um, 
uh, video uh, very much uh, please <laughs> give a thumbs up and like and uh, in this way obviously we'll promote uh, my channel on the youtube platform uh, and uh, of course uh, support me thanks to uh, youtube thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you next time bye